So at this juncture, our test is rendering an app component, and we are currently doing a basic query to search for our first input, the one for the email address. But as you might have guessed, our test isn't really doing anything valuable. The goal here is to simulate a real user perspective. So where I want to move this test towards is in the direction of interacting with this component much like a user would. So what I want to do is simulate the user finding the input for an email address and typing in a value. And then I want to do the same thing for the password field and then the confirm password field. And then I want to simulate the user pressing that register button or the login button, depending on which uh, mode of the form I'm in, and then verifying, for example, that that text appears below the submission button. I'm basically interacting with the component the exact same way as I would in the browser. And that's what makes for an effective test, one that models how a real world user would interact with it. So in this lesson, what I want to show you is how we can use a supplemental object from another library in the React testing library ecosystem to simulate the user typing into an input field. All right, and then we're gonna proceed through the remainder of the form, fill it out and walk through the entire flow over the next couple of lessons. First up, I think our test description is now a little out of date. Renders is not really capturing what we're doing. So let's provide something more appropriate here. So I'm gonna say something like, it logs user in. That is the responsibility of the app component from a non-implementation specific perspective, right? The goal of the test description should not be to say, use an array or use an object. It should be to describe the value of the test. What are we testing and why does it matter? This is our component. It's going to log the user in. So because our uh, app component operates in two possible modes, I'm gonna provide some additional context here in my tests by adding another describe block and simply saying when the user is in login mode. I'm providing a little bit of context because because remember, you can nest as many describe functions as you want within each other, and they're all going to appear in the test output in the terminal as just nested headers, right? And so whenever you have the situation where you have a specific scenario under which you're testing, for example, the user being in login mode or the user being in registration mode, those are two different scenarios. Those are two different contexts. And in those situations, I like to add a additional describe that tells the reader, hey, I'm specifically in this world, in this uh, branch of logic, right, in this context. So here I'm going to provide an arrow function, and I'm just going to cut and paste my content right here so it lives inside this describe. Right, and later on, we'll add another describe for being in registration mode. So now a reader understands that we have an app component, that it has the idea of a login mode, not code, but it, the reader understands the app component has a login mode and that it logs the user in. Okay, so this code, as we saw in the previous lesson, returns the actual DOM node, the HTML input element. So I'm gonna assign that to a constant. So I'm gonna get rid of my console log right here. And I'm just gonna assign it to a const called email input. And the reason I like to be descriptive like that is again, because we might have multiple input fields within our component. So I don't like to do things like uh, const input, right? Because there may be multiple ones. Okay, so now we've located the DOM node, the uh, input, and I want to simulate the user typing into it. In order to do that, I'm gonna import another library, more specifically, its default export, and I'm gonna call it user event, and it's going to come from at testing library, so same organization, and then slash user dash event. So this is technically a separate library from the NPM ecosystem perspective, and it exports a single default export of an object, and we're giving it the name user event. So this is an object with a whole bunch of methods, if I simply write it out in line in here, and you're going to see all of these methods correspond to various actions, or in other words, user events, things the user can do within the browser. Once again, we are not within the browser, we are within this simulated browser, this virtual DOM, but we can emulate the behavior uh, of a user uh, simply by using code from this object. So for example, there is a method called type, there is a method called click, and they work exactly as you might expect. They simulate that action, that event within our test. So what I'm going to do is find a method called type that's going to simulate the user typing, and this method needs two arguments. The first is what the user is going to be typing into, right? Because the method has no way of knowing. So we're gonna give it an actual 
DOM node, which is going to be our email input constant, which is referencing the actual input uh, that we have right here in our component. So we've located it above on line 11, but we're not doing anything with it. We just saved it and now we're saying, hey, type into that input. The second argument, of course, is going to be what we want the user to type. So if we want to simulate a real world experience, you might expect the user would type an email address. So I can do something fake here like test at email.com. And that's going to simulate the user typing, right? Now we're not gonna see any failures, but we also don't have anything really being asserted so far in this test. So to close this lesson off, I wanna show you another cool method that is available on the screen object. Remember the screen object is coming from the React testing library. We imported it and we used it uh, to query right here but it also has a helpful method called debug. And what debug is going to do is simply output the HTML of the current rendered component. Now you typically don't wanna leave this code within your test. We can see it's actually giving me a, an error here because it's not supposed to stay in your test suite. It exists solely for you as a developer to utilize when you're writing and then you remove it later because there's no reason to output HTML when the test is running normally. Imagine there's a hundred different tests in your test suite and they're all passing. You don't want to see the output from each one. You only use it when you're debugging, right? That's where the method name comes from, when you're figuring out how to write your test or when you're figuring out an error. So when I save this, we're going to see in our terminal, again, this method will output the HTML and we can see the complete HTML of our app component. So if I scroll up and we find that input, Let's see here, here's the header. Here is our label and our form for our email address. Notice that the value attribute of that input, which corresponds to the value that's going to be seen in the input on the screen in the browser. Notice here in that represented HTML, we have exactly what we entered as a user on the line above. So we decided type in the value test at email.com. And now we can see in this HTML from our virtual DOM, that that's exactly what we have. We have that input properly targeted and the value test at email.com has been populated within it, right? So now we have simulated the user going through a third of the form, right? And so what we're gonna do in upcoming lessons is do the rest. We're gonna target the password field, the confirmed password field, then we're gonna click the button and verify that what we expect to happen should happen, that the user should see some text depending on if they filled out the fields correctly. So once again, notice how React Testing Library and its methods are getting us to interact with the final output, the DOM nodes, kind of independently of how the component is written. We're targeting things based on their role rather than a specific HTML element or rather than a specific CSS class, things that are more likely to change over time. Rather, we are targeting by functionality and as we saw in this lesson with the user event object and its methods, we're also interacting with that uh, element or those elements the exact same way as a user would, right? And this is in sharp contrast with testing libraries that existed before React Testing Library, where we would test more on a component level. We would uh, dive into, for example, a component state and check whether it was what we expected. And the reason that paradigm fell out of favor, as you might guess, is because it's testing for the sake of us as developers to verify our code is right, but it's not really delivering value for the user. It's not testing the component in a more real life scenario. And when we can verify that our code is working as expected for the end user, that is obviously better, right? The goal of our code is to deliver value for somebody using our website, not just to give us comfort that our JavaScript is correct. And so that's kind of the spirit and methodology of the React Testing Library. And that's why uh, it has these kinds of methods that are really forcing you to figure out the best way to interact with the actual HTML generated by your React component. Okay, that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We'll continue chipping away at this test in the next lesson, and I will see you there.